Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today you're joining me as I discuss two of the cars that I've currently got in my stock range that I feel like are in the same kind of category. They're executive luxury saloons. I've got the 2014 Audi A8, it's the Sport Executive Edition versus the Jaguar XJ, albeit slightly older, a 2010 model, uh, but again with that three litre V6 engine and again, a luxury saloon. So I thought I'd do a comparison between the two. I know that four years can, can be quite a bit of difference between a 2010 XJ and a 2014 XJ, but I'll address what those changes are when we sit into that car later in this video. But we'll start with the A8. It is a low mileage example that I've got in. They're both right, quite low mileage, um, of which this one's only done 52,000 miles, but it is now 10 years old. So I want to know if it's more of a, a, a thing of the past or whether it still stays within today's kind of automotive industry and whether it still has its place. And I have to say, I don't think sitting in this car, you realise that it is 10 years old now. The trim choices that this particular one has, I still think is very relevant because it's something that I would choose even in a brand new car. You've got the brushed aluminium effect and also the piano black. They're two really popular options amongst the luxury vehicles. None of the buttons, the dials or the dash or anything like that has worn particularly bad. You know, I'd, I'd actually say they've worn really well. None of it's faded or cracked or broken or anything like that. They all still feel like really solid switch gear and everything like that. You know, I've got all the controls and everything that I would anticipate a luxury vehicle to have even by today's standard. It's got the executive seating in this one, which is this diamond pattern within the, uh, the center of the seats. And again, an enormous amount of seat controls that you have available to you. Um, Alcantara on the door card, and as I say, the brushed aluminium, that is a, a favorite of mine to have. So sitting within the cabin area, it certainly doesn't feel like it is a 10 year old car. And even the, the MMI systems that they have within the, the Audis, it still feels quite bright and fresh on the screen. The maps are dated, but they're going to be on a 10 year old car. A lot of people um, kind of go for the Apple CarPlay slash Android Auto kind of variant to, to put into it. And I don't blame them because it is quite a, a common thing that people do these days to kind of keep the car fresh. But everything else, I think it's worn really well. It's got analog dials. Obviously a lot of them now have the virtual cockpit. So you definitely notice the difference between a brand new and this one here. Um, but even the dials they still seem really quite fresh it's got the digital display within the center of it and the information is really clear and easy to use um, so yeah I'm, I'm really impressed sitting in this uh, as I say it's got the 3 litre V6 TDI engine that's producing 258 brake horsepower and whilst that's paired with the Audi Quattro system feels fantastic to drive you know it's really responsive I've got really good acceleration as I go cornering is really good it feels a little bit heavy but it's going to because it is an Audi A8 but it certainly feels really solid in both build quality and also driving experience it's um, something I quite happily sit in uh, for, for several hours a day going up and down the country so yeah I, I do feel like it is a really nice place to be and being the A8 it even has like the piano black on all of the switch gear around the steering wheel and everything like that so it still feels really quite smart uh, of a place to be in. It's very, very comfortable. The cabin's really quiet to sit in too. Um, it also has the start and stop technology, which means it's actually a Euro 6 engine. And what that means for people that live within the UK is it's ULES compliant, albeit a 2014 diesel car where a lot of them aren't Euro 6 until late 2015, 2016. This one is always ahead of the curve. Um, so it's Euro 6, you don't have to pay any additional fees to go through any of the city centres that have the ULES charge in them. London being the big one, of course, but they're bringing it across through to Birmingham and Bristol and things like that. This, you wouldn't have to worry about paying anything any additional, albeit a 10 year old car. So that's a real big plus for the A8. In terms of the exterior, that's where I do feel like it is a little bit dated. It does feel a little bit behind the times, just with the shapes and things like that. I still think it's a really good looking car, but if you compare it to the later Audis that have been released since then, 
it does fall behind a little bit. But internally, very, very pleased. Still has the screen that goes up and down to press a button there. It sinks itself through and it just has a real luxury finish to it, a real feel to it when you're inside, that you are in something that is a luxury car. Um, doesn't have a sunroof in this particular one. There are ones out there that do have the sunroof. But what I do quite like that this one does have is the ambient lighting. You'll see in the, the roof lining and things like that. And underneath here, it's got a lovely ambient lighting, which of a nighttime, again, makes you feel like you're in somewhere a bit more special. So, and again, the switch gear and everything down here, you've got a nice bright LED for the dual climate control. And I like the fact that obviously it's buttons. A lot of the later stuff has all gone to screens throughout. Um, this one here is still buttons and very, very easy to, to navigate your way through. I've got different driving modes that I can select as well. Um, so we're just in the auto drive mode at the moment, but I can put it into dynamic. And because it's the A8, it does have the air suspension. So it's stiffen itself up throttle becomes a bit more responsive your steering wheel becomes a little bit heavier on the steering to give you more of a feel for for what it is you're doing and that's quite a cool thing to have and then you've got the other way as well where i can put it into efficiency which the throttle becomes less responsive um, steering it just goes back to its normal comfort mode um, but it's all about trying to save you that bit of fuel um, so to change gear and lower rev and it will reduce the power of the air conditioning it will only kick in the compressor if it feels that it needs it um so yeah you know for the longer journeys it's, it's well equipped to do both long journeys and also having a bit of fun on some b roads if you get the opportunity to as i say it is an a8 it's a standard wheelbase they did do a longer wheelbase version but the standard wheelbase still feels a really big car you know there's an enormous amount of leg room behind me i'm not the tallest of people i know um, but I would have no issues at all taking a car full of passengers and I don't think it would feel cramped at all. I think it is made to be a big executive luxury saloon. So yeah, I love the interior of this car and I really do feel like it has stayed relevant. All the switch gear is still nice and fresh. It still feels really clean and, uh, and relevant in here. Um, you wouldn't think, as I say, it, it was a 10-year-old car. Um, but yeah, just the exterior, I think, lets it down slightly given that it does feel a little bit more boxy than what the uh, the later Audis do. So I think you definitely notice the difference between a newer A8 and this particular A8. Not that it's a bad looking car at all, but just something to bear in mind, really. This model of A8, it also ran from 2010 right the way through to 2017. Um, I think that's worth noting because of course, albeit the XJ is 2010 model, it still ran from 2010 up to 2017 2018 so they are comparable in that sense uh, this one here as i mentioned is the three liter v6 tdi they also did a 4.2 v8 tdi um, which isn't quite so popular within the uk tremendous engine an enormous amount of power uh, but a lot of people chose obviously the three liter um, as a, a run-of-the-mill type engine and it is very impressive in terms of a running cost i've been achieving 39.3 miles to the gallon on the drive that i've been doing on the the country roads that i do these test drives on um, i'd like to think on a, a longer motorway run i'll be hitting maybe even late 40s certainly mid 40s i think that's really quite achievable and for a car of this size and the comfort that it gives me the practicality of the space that i have within the cabin I'm quite impressed by that. I think it's a really good fuel consumption to have, uh, given the, the style of car that it is, the, the luxury saloon element, um, albeit with the Quattro system too. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is a big thumbs up, a massive thumbs up for me that it is a Euro 6 variant, which means that I can take it through London and, and town centres and, and not have to worry about paying a ULEZ charge. And, uh, and yeah, as I say, the interior, really, really impressed with. The exterior does maybe look a little bit dated, but again, that might be because there are A8s that come after this A8. I think the XJ has it in its favor, um, but the XJ kind of ran from 2010 right up to about 2018. I'm sure it was 2018, of which then there wasn't necessarily an XJ after that. So it kind of looks timeless in that respect, as against this one does feel a little bit older on the exterior uh, but we'll jump into the Jaguar XJ and, um, and have a comparison and see what you think.